M. The Media Project. Hey there, Brett here with Jamie. Hiya! The Mental Suppository has been getting a fair amount of fan mail. We're just as surprised as you. Yeah, and we thought we'd read you a few. This one says, The Mental Suppository is not what I expected it to be. I expected to hear a podcast, and all I was left with was a genital rash. From Twitter handle Conway Tweety Gal, just when I thought there was nothing at all worthwhile to listen to on the internet, you prove there's nothing at all worthwhile to listen to on the internet. Hashtag flaccid bag of chodes? Here's one from a Facebook user. Why do you live? This one reads, I listen to the mental suppository every week. This is a cry for help. Oh, here's another one from Conway Twitty Gal. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. You're the reason there's birth control. Oh, oh wait, she wrote more. Your father should have blasted you against the wall. Wow. Yeah. Uh, those aren't as bad as I thought they would be. I know, right? Yeah. The mental suppository. Not as bad as you thought it would be. All right. <laughs> Ow. Excuse me, do you mind if I join you? It wasn't my fault. Besides, she squeezes harder than that polo constrictor I got you for your last birthday. Oh, well then, uh, be careful. Uh, those office parties can get a little wild. Oh. <laughs> I can sympathize with you. I know how irresistible. <laughs> you need be jealous of no one. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about me, dear. I'm no water cooler Casanova. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm so square that I understand some of the secretaries are starting to refer to me as Herman the Cube. I've been yours since that first day you carved my initials in your leg. Hello and welcome to the Mental Suppository. I'm Brett Herholtz. I'm Jamie Billings. I'm Wayne Nevis. I'm Andrew Shanley. And I'm Kevin Barbary. Before we begin, we have a new sponsor to the podcast. This episode is brought to you by Halloween, the scariest Green Park for the entire family to visit this Halloween. Yeah, this place is lame. Oh, an empty room. Really scary. What the Hello, I'm Donald Trump, and I'm running for president in 2024. Ah! Get us out! Get us out! Too late, I lock the door. No! And I brought along Madonna dressed in her dominatrix costume. Watch me strike a pose. There's nothing to it. No! I looked into the abyss! Halloween, we found new ways to scare you. On your second visit, be sure to bring your therapy bill and get in half off. And make sure you don't miss out on our haunted hayride. I've been on a hundred of these, and there's nothing that could possibly scare me anymore. My name is Mike Lindell, and I made a pillow. That's why I'm qualified to help Trump run for country. Get me out of it! Get me out of it, thing! Mike, use the pillow on him. <laughs> That'll work. So, with the uh, new Adams Family movie that came out October 1st, and uh, with the Wednesday series Tim Burton's developing, as well as it being like the season for Halloween, I thought we'd talk about. Uh, you know, talk about the Adams family as well as maybe a little bit about the monsters. Yay! 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 Sure. Let's go. <laughs> or should I have gone? <laughs> right on, Lurch, old man. <laughs> if Thing could have said anything in the world, if Thing could have said something, what would it be? <laughs> Back you. <laughs> the finger? But a lot of the series, a lot of the characters' history didn't really start till the series was being created. I mean, it was originally just a one-a-day gag strip. Yeah, And most right. of the characters were, you know, would, were actually, I think, called from other strips he did. Like, uh, Morticia. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Where uh, Morticia was actually based on his uh, first wife. 
Oh, scary. Yeah. So, and she, after a while, she actually started cutting her hair in a uh, in a page boy fashion, so she wouldn't get recognized as uh, Morticia. And really? Fester was there, and the character that would become Fester was actually supposed to be a, a caricature of himself. Huh. I think that the concept of free advertisement didn't quite bode well with her at that time, because she probably wasn't getting anything out of that other than the fact that being stalked by a bunch of geeks. Uh, Good point. Yeah, who were coming after her? <laughs> right. I was like, I, I don't yeah. even know what you're. T- get away from me! You're just. I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, didn't let's... even go to the grocery store. So but... before the. Uh, so I mean, before the series came out, the characters didn't have names. They were just. Yeah, you know, I think the name of the, the strip he did for the New York was called like Out of This World. It was kind of the far side before the far side was sure. ever was ever created. And a lot of the strips that had him, some of my favorite ones that had. Uh, Charles Adams' his character in it is like there was one with a uh, a movie theater full of people and they're all crying at this at this movie and they have him in the center of it just kind of laughing at it. <laughs> and the other one was him him drive you know driving around a turn in the road and he's like uh, signaling this uh, uh this motor impatient motorist behind him to go around and what the guy doesn't see is around the corner is coming a tractor tra- a tractor oh, nice. trail is coming the other way. <laughs> So or basically, humor. like uh, you know, people drive in New England. Though. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, but it's basically a lot of dumbass drunk, uh, drunk. Excuse me, a uh, dumbass dark humor. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the the person in ch- uh, who's making the jokes, such as the person laughing during a crying scene or yeah. egging someone on, he sees the humorous of that, even though everyone else around you is like, oh my God, no, you couldn't possibly do that. Yeah. And deep down in each one of us, we're all like. <laughs> sort of yeah, like that would be so oh, yeah. funny if he So that's like sort of the beginning of what would have been now considered dark humor. Exactly. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was it was Gallo's humor back then. Usually Gallo's humor. Gallo's humor. I exactly. like that. Him and Edward Gorey were you know, like two artists I tend to I was, like uh, I was just going to say the, group together cuz they had, you know, not like similar like, art styles in a sort way. Sort of similar art styles but sort of a similar aesthetic where I think Gorey's was a little bit darker than his whereas Charles Adams I think was more like print friendly even though a lot of, you know, a lot of his stuff was just like Creepy humor. That was a lot of, you know, even now it's a lot of, still a lot of fun to read. Right. But also you have to notice that Charles Adams was trying to make a joke. Yeah. Whereas the other one was trying to make a, a I won't say a point, but a fright, yeah. really. As like, this is really meant to, like, yes, it's fun, but it's kind of meant to scare you. Charles Adams was like, yes, this is meant to scare you, but it's fun. And the funny right. thing is both artists, if you ever watch, uh, watch them in an interview, they were like completely different from the stuff they draw. Edward Gorey, if you hear him, he's, he has a... He's actually a very sing-songy voice, and you don't expect it to come out of him because he was like this very tall man with a huge white beard and bald head, and he just he had this very. And Charles Adams was kind of looked like Walter Matthau if you ever saw pictures of him. But he was he, like he the had, tall man, and like you know, you know I like to draw. Oi. But he kind of yeah, he kind of talked like this. Oi. Oh, had a, <laughs> Angus Scrim. Angus Scrim. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yeah. So when Good the uh, so when the series came about, uh, ABC was developing the series of the Adams Family. They they said to Charles Adams they'd give him sort of a, a created by credit if he kind of came up with like a storyline behind the characters as well as came up with the names. So uh, a lot of the names he he came up with on the spot. The only name they had a problem with is he originally wanted to call the character of Pugsley Pubert. Pubert. And uh, the yeah, uh, which is the name of the baby in the exactly. Adams Family That's, Values. Yeah, nice. That's yep. the reason why it's PG thirteen, folks. And, <laughs> uh, so the uh, so they were like, no, no, we we don't want that. So they changed the name to Pugsley because it's like we don't want the word puberty in, in, in on television. Sounds like puberty. Exactly. Yeah. But they they didn't realize that the name Fester was actually based on a uh, Victorian playground taunt, Fester the molester. And oh, interesting. Nobody. Oh, yes. And of course, the uh, network didn't catch that either. They didn't know their Victorian taunts. Or they were into that. And and Hus- <laughs> was it either Hustler or Penthouse had a regular comic strip called Chester the Molester. Really? really? Which is, uh, yeah. Yes, but that came out much later. Yeah, exactly. Wayne yeah. knows the exact details. Please tell us the history. Oh, of shut Ch- up. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't, when I watched the Adams Family uh, growing up, obviously in reruns. Yeah. Not that old. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize it was a originally a comic strip until after I had seen the show. And right. then once I saw the show... I only found out about the comic strip because I was into Gay and Wilson, who also did dark humor, uh, single panel, okay, uh, yeah, things like that. And then that led me to find out about Charles Adams having a comic strip, and then I found the you know the books of his stuff, and, right? Uh, so that was uh, that was how I I originally found out about the Adams family, and of course being on at the same time, they basically followed each other on television. It was my afternoon was uh, the Adams family, and then it was the original Star Trek. And then the monsters, right? And I would get kicked out of the room for the 
black and white shows, and then I would try and fight my sister for the color for okay. Star Trek. Okay, that's understandable. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's funny because when the the movies came out in '91, I, I don't remember them. Uh, not that they didn't do well. I don't remember them being received well by the critics in at the time or, or people. Because I I don't know if it was like people's mindset. Well, I think also was, is that there were certain. Um, liberties that they were taking yeah. in regards to the CGI abilities that they had. One yeah. prime example would oh, be... The spe- yeah, the special effects that they were doing, yeah. Right. One, I think one prime example is Thing. Effects at the time. Thing is a hand in a box. Right. But Thing pops up from different boxes, which right. kind of gives the impression, what exactly is Thing? Now, here's the like, thing. Like a teleporting... Here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing when is... you took his hand out of that box and you made it an independent... A corporeal being, Preacher, yeah. you yeah. took away all the mystique of what that thing was. And I think that was one of the main things, for me at least, that took it away from the show is because I felt thing <laughs> should have been something more than just a hand. And I liked both. I, liked, I loved it on the segment show. of what makes Wayne pissed. Well, <laughs> I, loved the, I loved him on the show, but I loved what they did with him in the movie. Yeah. And one of the things about the movie that I enjoyed is they uh, they actually took – Individual panels of Charles Adams cartoons yes, and scene, use them. Very the first, first scene, scene is the the one the, the Christmas carolers where they're they're gonna pour pour the uh, bucket boiling of, oil. Yeah, they call yes, it a boiling, boiling oil. oil. The cam- the when the scene, camera pans up to them and at the very top of the steeple, yes, and, and both of them are yes. Yeah. But and no, the last so, scene in the movie was uh, was actually you know when she takes out the uh, the baby thing with the the baby clothing with the three legs. The ex, yeah, that was charm. from one of the, the comics too. <laughs> where it has uh, Morticia <laughs> knitting something, knitting and, it, and yes, and Gomez coming into the room just like. Elated. My, my, I think I think one of the reasons the critics maybe didn't like it. One of the things that disappointed me about the seeing the movie, even though I loved I loved both movies. Yeah. But the one thing that disappointed me about it is you spend half of the original movie setting up who Fester is instead right. of just going right into having them already there and doing a story That's true, around yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but that, that was a funny been element. Yeah, it could have been the a better, better story. Story could have been and and. That's the way I've always felt about any form of remake. It's like if you're going to put the time and effort to really say to somebody, because you're you're not you're banking not only your career, but that you're saying, listen, I am the person who is going to remake this because there is nobody else that can do it like I can. Yeah. And then you come up with this. Well, Brett Brett was making the comment about how it didn't seem like it was well received when it came out, and I kind of feel like it. It wasn't well received, but I, I feel that it had a lot of hype behind it. I it did too much well. hype. Yeah, I did. kind of I Wait, kind of remember. I, I think that killed it because of the actors. Like, but I, I but I kind of remember there was like lots of tie-in with like Burger King or McDonald's oh, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Also, yeah. I mean, it did so it could have well, been some type of like oversaturation of that that could have MC helped. MC Hammer make, had you know, a song off yes, that movie that's right. too. You know, he it, did the it whole thing. It wasn't necessary, and it didn't help the fact that I mean, again, I like Angela Lansbury. Uh, Angela. Uh, I like Angelica <laughs> Houston. I love Raul Julia. I think they did great in the movie. Yeah. But if you maybe put two other people who could have done just as good a job or were slightly less known, it might have done better because hmm. now you're looking at them. You're not looking at their characters. Well, let's look at the possibilities, if anyone can think about who would be there right right now. If you, if you could recast it perfectly, who would be like the perfect Gomez Adams? The one um, back then? Oh, gosh. If, if we were like to do it right now. If everybody yeah. was the age they were back then, um, anybody I wanted. Okay. I would pick Remy Malek. Remy as, Malek. As Gomez. That's a yeah. good one. That's good. That was really I was good. thinking possibly um, Greg Bierko. I love Craig Bierko. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I gotta pull. That I think up. he would pull that he's off because he's because he's hilarious. He's got like great comic timing. Mm-hmm. But with casting Rami Malek, you're basically just casting a short Raul Julia. <laughs> so well, Gomez yeah. in the original comics was a lot shorter than uh, Morticia was. Right. Too, no, so. I know, but it's. I it's, mean, uh, true. Here's yeah. the thing, though. I I I look at Rami Malek. And... Oh my God! This guy's like seven foot tall. It wouldn't work. Well, besides that, you dumbass. <laughs> Have him as Lurch. Uh, <laughs> That would work, but but like you know, besides that, you look at Remy Malek, and I've seen the performances he's done and stuff like Mr. Robot, and you know, and Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, and that was amazing. I I can see that with the mustache. Is he going to be in the recent James Bond film, or was he in a? Yes, in the James, okay. James, James okay. Bond film. Yes. But I can see that. I can see he's got the acting chops. He could pull it off. I really think he could pull it off. All right, that's a good one. Uh, as, as far as looking like he does in the strips and everything, I think their casting for Wednesday is perfect. Yeah. I can't remember the actor's name, but uh, uh, the uh, Hispanic actor. 
Oh, uh, 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 Luis Guzman. Luis Guzman. Yeah, oh, he's in yes. yes. New Ru- oh, yeah. Wednesday, and I'm looking at, when I heard about the casting him as Gomez and Catherine Zeta Jones as Morticia. I was like, that works. Yeah. That actually, you know, because you have like the the height thing, but also you have the right look for the characters too. And mm-hmm. that could be that can that could possibly be Tim Burton's involvement in it. That's true. Yeah. Oh, Luis Guzman. <laughs> <laughs> he's awesome. Well, you know, it I, was Adams was is really, you know, Gomez was really more Latin anyway. You have to have that Latin, yeah, in right. there, you know. But at the time, I'm wondering if the, you know, the '91 film p- people, you know, it was like still. I think it was like what 20 years after the original TV series, people still in their minds had like John Austin and Carolyn Jones in, you know, sh- you know, kind of etched in their minds as Gomez and Morticia. Because I mean, if you've seen pictures of Carolyn Jones, she was. She was she was a looker. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Carolyn Jones also oh, died yeah. sadly. Uh, she did. It was, you know, uh, Steve uh, John Austin was still around. He was. Yeah. He was I mean, he's working still around it. now. He's yeah. Still he's still around. And he's still alive. And he's is. I what about Sean a... Austin as Gomez? Ooh. <laughs> nah. No. No. <laughs> oh well. Uh-uh. Doesn't even look like his dad. He's like a yeah. completely different. Uh, yeah. No. Well, he was also adopted. Looks like too, his so. mom. <laughs> ah. No, his mom's Patty, Patty Duke. Duke. Yep, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> but he also, Sean Austin adopted him since he, he was from a relationship with, uh, I forget the name of the, the, the actor, but she'd had a, a brief relationship with somebody else. and uh, Yeah, Sean. Uh, uh, Look at TMZ Sean over Austin. here. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah I know. This guy's like name. Wikipedia. He adopted him, big, giving him his name. Well, the other thing, too, about the Adams Family is, and I think this is kind of something we got to also mention, that show originally was only on for like two seasons. That's right. And it it survived into reruns and everything else, like and and into years. movies. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, like it had it had staying power. And I remember as a kid growing up watching and watching Adam's Family, and and then know, the uh, when they did the uh, the reunion, the oh uh, what was it Halloween was with the color the Halloween with the uh, new Adam's Family. Yeah. Yeah. That was interesting. Because the they, they had the original cast, yeah. except for the ones that were passed away. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they because they had uh, what's his name the the the, char- the uh, actors who played uh, Wednesday, Wednesday and uh, Huxley, you know, as older characters in it. And yeah, she actually was kind of became a knockout at later oh, yeah. later on. <laughs> she, like, ended wow. up, uh, marrying, uh, <laughs> she ended up marrying. She ended up marrying Jim. Jim. God, I forgot his first. The name. guy Butler. worked in porn. Yes, he worked in <laughs> porn. <laughs> what? Who? Oh, yeah. so there's a porn star, last name Butler, first name I honestly cannot remember for the life of me. Uh, he in, and her in, in my, in my, <laughs> in my Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Seth MacFarlane production. Uh, actually, am I the Butler? <laughs> no point getting this now, but that is actually a really Seth interesting Rogen point laugh. of conversation as to how that time frame went from uh, the art of making a movie that had porn in it to making porn that had some type of scene set up in it. Uh, basically going from people putting effort into the movies to just, okay, we got the scene well, they put set up. into the movies. <laughs> <laughs> they put a thing in a box in those. <laughs> <laughs> However, how is that? Anyway, how is this the, uh, the thing whole, in those movies? Whole I like different, to know. Uh, podcast okay, for now, that one. Now okay. the rails <laughs> are off. Oh, uh, different podcast oh, for that one. But <laughs> anyway, Adam's but the, family. Yes. But yeah, so like uh, one of the other things is that they actually have original shots of the original set of the Adam's family, and it's like dressed up pink. Like Wait, the orig- what are you really? talking about? The original set of the Adams Family, TV well, because series? Being, from the TV series, being black yeah. and white. it was black and white. We right. never saw the original set in color because right. it was it, but was it had to have a high contrast against the lighting. Exactly, so and so that makes perfect sense. It yeah. was made. It was painted pink. Uh-huh. The entire set. So I mean, can you imagine if you watched that show in color? And like you know, saw the whole like Holy Adam's crap, family. What the houses. hell am I watching? There'd be a lot <laughs> if they did colorize it. Bringing be a back lot some memories, man. Oh yes. Because that's the other thing too is like it was it was canceled because of co- the cost for doing uh, black and white to color and it was too much money apparently. I mean it was just like one of those things where why didn't they just keep it black and white then? I know because like well I, as well, I remember shows this, at no, that no, no, time no. at that time when color TV came out like the you it was a status kind of like you know if you didn't have an iPhone now you know 
You, what, what's wrong with you? Fat man. If you, well, color. Have, if you didn't have a color True. TV back then, it was a status symbol. You know? And there were hold shows on, that hold stayed on. in black and white even after other shows had gone to That's color. Right. Well, yeah. hold on. Hold on. Now, to that point, yes. But they were also – the technology was advancing to the point where everyone that was – um, of a certain grade, which is all black and white, had to start upgrading or they were going to be left behind. That was another thing. So, yes, there was a lot of shows that stayed black and white because it was cheaper for them that, hey, we got a great show here. It's doing great. It's black and white. We can keep a low cost on them yeah. while we start restructuring our, redoing our infrastructure so we can start doing these Star Trek shows and that are more expensive, that are more colorful and things like that. But the reality was they weren't pushing out the black and white shows. They were just saying, we need to transfer you over eventually. But like back in the day when the when the silent films went to talkies and a lot of people lost jobs because you just couldn't transition over well, other shows similar to this effect just could not transition from black or and white to color. Same as right. vaudeville. It was kind of like when silent... To, to, exactly. Yeah. It was like when silent movies went to sound... But another thing is back then, ratings were different than they are today. Absolutely. You only had three networks, and if your show on a primetime slot less was still not, black and white. Yeah, if you didn't pull in like at, like at least 20 million viewers or more, your show would be like, you know, pulled off the, off the schedule. And, you not know, to mention the fact that as time has gone on with ratings mm -hmm. and with demographics and with mm -hmm. localizations and with uh, uh, urbans compared to cities, is that you now have more ways of breaking that down yeah. to be like, wait a minute, we thought they were actually getting this level of viewers. They're getting this level of viewers because we're now seeing really where these numbers are. But unfortunately, back in the day, they didn't have that. Like when they canceled Star Trek, one of the big mistakes that they did when they canceled Star Trek, the show was only on for three. Right, the original show, is that the marketing guys at NBC were like, why did you cancel this show? It hits the this particular demographic that it does really well with. I mean, the other thing, too, is Star Trek was on at like 10 p.m. at night mm -hmm. on like a Friday night, which is a very, it's like the death nail of any any particular show. You don't put like show, you, Thursday nights are a prime spot. That's why they call Thursday night must-see TV. On uh, okay. What night was the Adams Family on? Um... So I mean, original air. Not actually that. I'm not actually sure. Because I mean, that can it. also have For an the effect. Google. Right, there we go. For the Google. Da, da, da. I'm curious. But basically, when you're talking like you know ratings, like you know time slot is everything. It's crucial. Right. Oh, absolutely. To keeping a yeah. show on the especially air. yeah however, back then it totally was. However, yeah. however, that doesn't change the fact that when you have monkeys running the asylum, you're still gonna get shit thrown at you. And I'm sorry, there were plenty of really good shows that have only lasted for one season because some dipshit executive took a look in that and goes, hmm, I like the female actress. Send her to my room. Oh, she's not interested? Cancel the show. Uh, I'm not saying every single one was like yeah. that, but let's be honest. How many good shows were Brought canceled because some executive Brought to you by your friends at the Weinstein just Company. Dicks. <laughs> the other thing, too, to consider is that this was a time period in which TV was produced at a level of 26 episodes per season. season. That's right. Yes. Okay. That's today true. you only see like maybe like six. When six was the 12. last the last season of Game of Thrones was like six episodes. Yeah. And yeah. we waited like two years for that thing. And these people are like cranking episode after episode, doing 18 hour days. Sure. You know, throughout the year, and they're they're they, I mean, you know, after two seasons, you've got like 56 shows. That's enough. And some asshole leaves a Starbucks cup there. I know. Right, but but now here here's the thing. Here's the thing that ruins the realism. Is yet again another example of this gimme 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 mentality because binge watching is now the new drug. Sorry, yep. th thank you, thank you. Binge watching is now the new drug. Is that you want to watch your show from beginning? When my wife and I started binge watching uh, Breaking Bad, we saw the first three seasons of that show. Then we'd caught up to the to the channel that was airing, which I think was AMC. And when we started watching them. On a week-to-week -week basis, we felt like junkies. We're like, what yep. the hell? Where's our Breaking Bad fix? Come on, come on, man. Till you got a new episode Actually, soon. I just, I just wanted to get back to um, what Kevin mentioned earlier about Halloween with the Adams Family. Yes. After the Adams Family was canceled, I don't know if you guys had seen, there's like, they tried a couple weird animated versions of it. Yes, they did. One yes. was uh, like the new Scooby-Doo movies. Yep. I was just, had, yeah, didn't they put them in they with did, they had yes, the original the one-hour Scooby-Doo yeah. where they had special guest appearances. Which they had John Austin, Carolyn Jones, yep. Jackie Coogan, Ted mm -hmm. Cassidy doing the voice. But then they, like, I think like maybe a year or two after that, and it's actually on Tubi if you want to check it out. There's like this, you know, Hanna-Barbera was always 
really odd at putting like weird juxt juxtapositions of their uh, of like uh, television characters. And uh, what they did was they had like a series with, like with the Adams family traveling the country in a RV that looked like their house. <laughs> oh wait! Yes. Yes. And uh, on that one, because I remember that was on when I was in kindergarten. Yep. Uh, Jodie Foster was the voice of Pugsley. That's right. And I think the only. <laughs> but two... it looked like the Charles Adams comic strip. It did. Strip. They drew him like and the act, comic strip. The two characters, the two actors they had back for that series were was uh, of course uh, Ted Cassidy as Lurch and uh, Jackie Coogan, who uh, some people might not uh, realize his first uh, feature film role was in Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. He, and oh. uh, he actually had a, a law named after him because his uh, his uh, parents uh, try you know or his uh, mother and stepfather. His parents did. Yeah. His parents basically took all of the money he earned as a child actor and spent it on themselves. Exactly. So that's why the law was created. If he oh, was nice. able to get that money back, Daddy needs there his probably new set of booze. would exactly. There make probably wouldn't have been work. that much about yeah. that. So you know he went from the get kid. your money's worth on these kids. So he went from the kid to being uh, Uncle Fester, but he was another one who for that series he came back to do the voice of Fester, and they ended up actually having this uh, actor Lenny, I think his name's Lenny Weinreb, who was known for he, some people might know as Timer the Cheese Guy from the Hanker for a Hunk of yes. Cheese. Oh Hanker God. for a Hunk of Cheese. Did the voice yeah. of Joe oh, Wagon Wheels. Yes. <laughs> he did the voice of Gomez for that, and he, you know it's <laughs> so it's like. Why does hey, jobs a job, right? You know, you know, yeah. if you're thinking, why does Gomez sound like Timer the Cheese Guy? That's the reason. Hey, jobs he was also job. the original voice Blues of Scrappy the bunker scene. Scrappy Doo. Yeah, he was the original voice of Scrappy Doo. And... Hated Scrappy Doo. Everybody uh, hated Scrappy. I think you, I think you liked him when, when he was a, a kid. Punk. Then you got older and realized he's an annoying, an annoying character. Well, you know, but it was like Hanna Barbera's idea of putting a mascot character with the the character, the other characters. Well, I felt They're like trying he was... to sell stuff. Yep, exactly. Did you? Uh... Did you know that uh, Uncle Fester was voiced by Rip Taylor in the 90s? That's right. I Animated remember that. Really? They brought John Austin back to do the voice of, you know, when the movie came out. And they figured, well, big business for Saturday morning. So they did an animated, another animated Adam's all family. the kids know who Rip Taylor was. Yeah. I got this or, brand new prop. It's funny. <laughs> was it Rip Taylor or Rip Torn? The president no. couldn't be here, but he said to wire. <laughs> That's Rip Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, yes. No. Yeah, the Taylor's confetti blonde everywhere. or whitish hair. Oh, gentleman. yes. Yeah, the toupee he used to make flip over. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It was it's funny. You know the guy that they spent all the money For a second, I thought the, it was uh, like the Paul Lynch or something. Jackass 2. Oh, the... <laughs> what, 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 what? He was in Jackass or Jackass 2. Yes, he was. Taylor was. Was he? Yeah. Yes, he was. Oh, oh god. With the confetti and everything. Uh, he's right. gone so, down there. I'm showing you my age. The first time I ever saw Rip Taylor was with Cheech and Chong and Things Are Tough All Over. There's a scene where the guys are stuck in the desert trying to get to some form of civilization, and Rip Taylor's driving in, and he picks them up uh, and takes them uh, to Las Vegas. And he's trying to explain to them that he's Rip Torn, not Rip Taylor. <laughs> so he acts completely like Rip Taylor throughout the entire scene. Oh, that's crazy. Making the that's worst good. jokes. And you got Chong, you just sitting there going, <laughs> every time the guy would make a oh. joke. And he goes, oh, please tell him to stop. Cheech goes, well, man, why don't you tell him, to, why don't you stop crying? Or, 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 stop laughing, then he'll stop um, making those stupid jokes. And he goes, I'm not crying, I'm laughing, I'm crying. <laughs> it was just the worst scene ever, but he just used that for like hey, a good... Hey, shut up, man! <laughs> five Rip, minutes. Rip Taylor was one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like five oh, minutes of the worst Rip Taylor jokes ever. Was he ever on the Hollywood Square? Or... Oh, yeah, he was okay, regular. Yeah. The Everybody's Gong been on Show, the yeah, Match Squares. Game. Um, he, played, he was he was a staple, man. Yeah. Just like uh, Charles Donaldson Riley, he was a staple. Or Paul Lynn. Or Paul Lynn. Paul yes. Lynn. If you've ever seen my Goodfellas, a uh, fake Goodfellas poster that's Paul Lynn, Charles Nelson Riley, and Rip Taylor, I'll show it to you on my phone. Um, Paul Lynn, the only one of those three that I never met or interviewed. That's, well, he he died pretty uh, early, so yeah. Found dead in his yeah. Hollywood apartment. <laughs> oh, what a tragedy. <laughs> I still remember that movie Freaked that they made that joke. Oh, about. in '93, uh, Paul Lynn uh, gets a center square. <laughs> Wait, Alex, uh, Alex Winter, Winter yeah. Alex Winter. Yes, okay, yep. now I remember the movie. We're we're going way off on the rails yeah. on this one now. Plus, Actually, I also can't... I need to I need to mention this because uh, people will comment and say it's Aston, not Austin. Oh, okay, good just, to know. Just moving forward. No, that's forward. a valid point. That yeah, is, thank, thank you. you, thank you. That's a valid point. We can't talk about the Adams family without talking about the Munsters, though. Oh, goodness, Especially yes. where there's a new movie in development by Rob Zombie. Yes. Now, that 
is going to be interesting because I've always felt that the Munsters was pure slapstick. I felt that yeah. there was, other than the fact that they were using a Halloween theme characters, there was nothing tangible I, about this show other than pure slapstick. I read up yeah. on that, and apparently it was an idea they were trying to push since like 1946, having a a uh, either a movie or a television show based on like the Universal the Monsters. Universal mon- yes, mm-hmm. yes, where each so, member of the family yep. was a different monster. So it's an interesting thing that you know it took how many years from 46 to like 64. 64. Same, same as the Adams yep. family. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. There were things I liked about both shows, but I definitely preferred, I don't know why, preferred the Adams family yeah. over the monsters. Now, I think the reason for that I was a monsters that, fan myself. I no, love the monsters in a real house. Turn, turn. This is like a oh, Beatles monsters mouse house was amazing. Beatles monkeys kind of thing. No, yeah, Beatles, that's going to be Beatles stones. Uh, yeah, it would be Beatles stones. Don't yeah. bring in the monk- monkeys. Monkeys, yeah. the monkeys. Well, cuz the monkeys were developed because of the Beatles, yeah, were I they? Like the monkeys. Yeah, I think I like the monkeys everybody. were also like commercially made. <laughs> so you could have four of any guys. Here we go. I mean, we had we had was it Edward Gwen as as Herman. Right. Fred, 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 Gwen. Fred Gwen. I'm sorry, Fred Gwen. We had no, Beverly, you said that wrong. Right, a lot, lot, lot of Monica animals. Carlo. Just let you know, that's your third mistake, Andrew. I know. You said that wrong. Sorry, we'll have to bury a cat. Uh, hey, you guys screwed up another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the dead is better. <laughs> you, had, you had Butch Cassidy. You know, and Butch Patrick. Butch, Butch, Butch Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> I'm having a rough day. Are you guys right. drinking? <laughs> what's uh, yeah, I wonder what's I, in the I've been King. having my Pepsi. It's like, ah. Okay, uh, yeah, we had Fre- Fred Gwynn as Herman Munster. Yep. yep. Vaughn uh, DiCarlo is DiCarlo. Uh, Lily Munster. He had um, uh, Al Patrick. Lewis. Al Lo- Lewis is Al Lewis is grandpa. Al Lewis. Now, here's another thing. Hal Lewis, he and Fred Gwynn come from comedic backgrounds. Yes. They were They've been doing a... a lot. Now, Yvonne DiCarlo didn't. But Yvonne DiCarlo did the perfect straight guy, like to the, yep. the whole... Um, uh, Jerry, Jerry Lewis to the straight guy Dean Martin kind of jokes. Like she would just stand there waiting for those one-liners to throw out while the other idiots around her set all the jokes. Well, that was sort of like uh, yeah. Mort- which was perfect for that her. That was sort of like Morticia in the original series too. It, you know, she didn't. You know, when when something would happen, you know, she would almost. It's like she, you know, when people would be creeped out, she'd almost be like confused, like strange. You know, nice man, but he mm. seemed a bit strange. Not, well, they can't, all can't be normal like us, Morticia. Not only that, but like you know. Um, Fred and Al were on Car 54. Where yes. are you? Oh, that's right. Yes, so they were. They already, another, had their, they already had the comedic timing built had, in with each they other. They had it down perfectly. You watch Car 54, and then you watch them on The Monsters. It's the same act, practically. Pretty much. They Pretty worked much, yes. so well together on that show. But, you know, one of the things that, that was really tough for Fred on that show was the makeup. Oh, I'm sure, because, yeah. And those boots. And those boots. And those he, boots. There were there were times where he had like he was like he lost a lot of weight because he was sweating a lot because of that. I mean, it was a tough job for him to do, and well, especially back then because like the height, the lights that they had for TV back then are like the sun. You also have yeah. to remember the fact that uh, you're working at a time frame when the studios still technically had control of what was going yes. on, even in television. And so they were going to be like, listen, we need to make Fred Gwynn look green uh, as far as the TV show right. story goes. Well, it's black and white. Are we going to make him look green? No, we're going to probably make him look fuchsia because that's the color that we need for the tint. Show up. Yeah. Okay, well, it's sort of like we don't have... mask on Batman. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any uh, chemical friendly fuchsia that we can put no. on Fred Gwynn. We got this harsh chemical stuff. Okay. This stuff's going to hurt him. Okay. He could die. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he's he's hired to do a job. He, get him the paint. Let's move. That was back yeah. in the day when it was always like that. Like nobody had any ability. That's why it was to... always called property. Exactly. Yeah. People people were props. Yeah. I'm surprised Hollywood. I mean, I I don't have a problem with Rob Zombie. I'm but I'm surprised Hollywood gave him a green light to make yeah. a movie version of the monsters. I know it's like near and dear to his heart, so I would hope he wouldn't screw it up. Yeah. Um. And I I will. Reserve judgment until I've seen it, but I'm, I'm just surprised. In general, he always has trouble funding a movie. Yeah. How was he able to suddenly get a green light he to do the have... monsters? I mean, well, it's never been done. He's got no, that, but he could do a lot of his hoping. own self. They did bring the monsters back in the '80s. Or the oh, I mean, as a movie, is oh, it yeah, ever yeah, been yeah, done yeah. as a movie? Um, the mon- monsters today. Well, yeah. they tried that Monst- monsters with, with, now. Uh, with, with, with John Shuck. John Sh- John Shuck, that's but, right. But the original show, like they had, like one of the big jokes of the show was like, you know, Marilyn, their their their, their niece, hot daughter, yeah, their yes. hot daughter, yes. she and was they're all just like, who for them oh. was 
hideously disgusting yeah. where every other guy was she's like, the oh normie. my god, she's the hottest thing ever. Right. And like every <laughs> single episode where Marilyn had a date, she'd bring them home and then like something crazy would happen where like the boyfriend get and freaked, freaked out. out. And yeah. the boyfriend would jump out the window and they'd always overcrank the speed of the video. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> and she, but here's the thing. She would always think the reason they would all run off was because the moment they saw her family saw the difference, realized it's me. They're running away because of me. I looked hideous to them. What's wrong with me, Uncle Herman? Right, but... All right, probably... Uh, there's I'm... nothing wrong with you. <laughs> I mean, I, that, was, that was hilarious. And then they tried they were trying to come up with a way to make her look like them, and then it ac they accidentally caused Herman, <laughs> Herman to become turn handsome. normal. And there was like one episode <laughs> where he that. turns normal. Was, that was an awesome uh, episode. There was another remake they tried a few years ago with like Eddie Izzard as Grandpa and uh, Jerry O'Connell. Really? And it was the it was the strangest thing because they didn't make them look like the monsters. They, they made, made them... a pilot. I remember yeah. that. Yep. I remember that pilot. Familiar. And Eddie Eddie Izzard did like this whole upside down kind of scene where he was being like hung up by his feet while he was having a conversation with his grandson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my God, that was actually semi semi funny. But it defeats the purpose huh. of the original monsters, having them look like everybody else. Or trying to live in a home that was like... I think that was another thing, is that they were living in a more modernized home. Right. But starting to turn it into more their style. But again, it, it was all that that overdone slapstick. And yeah. it was like, yes, I get you want to you want to be true to the movie, but you could still make really good comedy and not make these guys look like friggin' idiots. Yeah, that's true. The other thing too is that um, the show only lasted again like two years, just like um, just like the Adam Adam's family. family. And I think it was canceled for the same reasons, but it still was a very popular show. And they also had a movie that they made. The they made Monsters a couple movie of movie in the sixties. Monsters, yeah, Monsters Go Home. Yep. Yeah, Monsters Go Home. That was the uh, that was that was actually. Wasn't there in another color. one? Here comes the monsters. Or something? Yeah, here comes the monsters. That was later on. Here comes but, the monsters. But you could definitely tell like their age kind of was starting to really yeah. get to them after a while cause... because they weren't progressing. No, they weren't. It was the same thing, and I'll be honest with you. I, I look at those movies that they made for the from the original cast and TV show, and it felt like they didn't know what to do with it. It was like a whole different format and everything. Well, else here, that. here's also the thing: the Adams family had a backstory to work with because you had yes, Charles Adams yeah. creating this for people to be like, "Yes, we're never going to explain where Morticia Gomez and all these people came from, but we're going to have this information so that when we throw out the jokes, we have the answers for that." Adams, uh, Adams family, Monsters. the monsters were thrown together, even though they originally had a concept to let's, hey, let's make a story of a bunch of uh, uh, movie monsters, movie that, are monsters that are a family. That's as far as they took it. I was like, okay, well, go on, expand from but there. Where do we go from they there? Also they, had the great, they also had that great uh, uh, Dragula. Yeah, George Barris yes. designed that. Yeah. George who? Barris. George Barris, the oh. same guy who designed the Batmobile. Yes. We're actually, oh, that's right. I think he's also the same guy who did the Monkey Mobile. Uh, yeah, he did. He, he did was a really, lot of cars. He did a lot of themed cars back then for TV and and film and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. they, but, they 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 he takes them or the his company takes them on tours to shows now. Exactly, if, exactly. Yeah. I remember correctly. He also did the yes, James Brolin, James Ronnie. Brolin. Oh, the oh my god, oh, that car. car. That's, James Brolin. That, yeah. that's what I said. If I've ever gotten to be had enough money where I could be that level of stupid, I was going to go to Richard Rollins in Texas and say, "Watch this movie. Watch it." Every inch of it. Watch it. And then as soon as it was over, he'd be like, "Now make me that car." <laughs> you want to? Give me, you want to just like basically start doing donuts in front of? Them? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> nah, he wants to drive up like Uncle Buck. Anton Lavey actually was a technical advisor on that film. Oh, nice. Yes, he was. <laughs> yes, he was. He was. He was uh, brought to make in... this a a true Halloween type episode where yeah. we talk about everything death. Why not talk about Satan? Satan. Satan. Which could it be? <laughs> well, hold Satan? on. Hold on. I mean, let's let's be real. The Church of Satan is actually starting to make themselves known. Actually, it's the Church of Stan. <laughs> yeah. We all just read it wrong. They're actually in Massachusetts. You should come on, go on down there, and say hi. Hi, we are from the Church of Stan, and we're here to just uh, say, Hail Stan. <laughs> Hail Stan. Oh, I, but, <laughs> I was hoping someone else would join that. But so there was the Munsters coach, which they designed for yes. the show specifically. Yep. Yes. Yep. And they did Dragula specifically for Munster Go Home. Yep. Yes. And so those two cars, they're probably some of the most iconic. Which, 
You got to admit they they looked like of the times. They were very they were roadsters. Beat. They were very no like yeah. uh, the the dress that they had they put them in. Like the outfits were very beatnik. Like I remember, oh, yeah. I yes. remember he like had the like wild the, ones, the leather hat, with with yeah. like a choker <laughs> yes. or something. Yes, that's right. Like, when he was doing that drag racing, yeah, uh, episode, he had like a cravat or something. I don't know. It was just he looked really of the times. Definitely, yeah. definitely. <laughs> little little uh, wild one there from uh, from uh, Bur- who was it? Marlon Brando. Marlon, Marlon Brando. Brando. Yeah. What is with you today, man? I have no idea. I literally oh, just said that, Andrew. Beyond I the, know. <laughs> beyond the set designs, beyond the cars, the two things also the shows are known for are their theme songs. Of oh, course. Yes, God, of yes. course. I did prefer the Munsters theme song. Yeah, oh, yeah. The yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, okay. Refresh my memory because I can only remember <laughs> now with him snapping his fingers. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you, thank the you. Monsters yeah. were more, more ah, well, ah, the monsters were more, ah, more, ah, more, ah, more, ah, more, ah, more, more ah, groovy. Ah, ah, they were more that '60s groovy. <laughs> like a to, rockabilly. Like you could dance, you could dance yeah. to it. Rockabilly <laughs> surf music. Hey! Yes. <laughs> wow. But I did love the music on the Adams Family outside of the theme. Yeah. Song. A lot yes. of good music there. The teat. Um. Just the theme music that they would play in between the scenes was all really good. And apparently, and, uh. John Aston and uh, Carolyn Jones were actually uh, both physically attracted to one another. Well, and even of though they course. didn't act, even though they didn't act on it, they kind of brought it to the characters. On Kish, that's yeah. French. Yes, interesting. Well, no, let me kiss about. you everywhere. Here is actually and that drove the that drove the uh, the networks nuts. They were like, you know, we can't be showing you know this sort of stuff on television. Of course, I mean that was of the time that you couldn't even show uh, a married couple in the same bed. You're not going to have or the him same start, bedroom. start kissing I love Lucy. her all up I love the arm. Lucy. It's the first time I'd ever seen somebody who was married in two separate beds. And I'm like, I kept asking my parents. I'm like, how exactly did little Richie come about? Did, did they bother to move the furniture? Because the moment I start moving and unplugging Good catch, things, Lucy. I'm no longer <laughs> in the mood to do anything. Ah, uh, Lucy. Well, I mean, like going off a little, a little bit on a tangent here, like when you see WandaVision, for example, and there's that scene where their two beds kind of slap together. Yes. Yep. That was cool. When you see what? Um, I've yet to see one um, So, which we talking about? It's uh, it's the MCU. They just came up with a whole bunch of TV shows on Disney Plus, and one of them is One Division. And a One Division. Yeah, I thought Wanda you were saying Vision. One Division. <laughs> it's a new band. <laughs> just one person. And they divide. Yeah. Into five people. Please sponsor us so we can get free memberships. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I thought there was so they go through each individual decade and they have like a different theme song in each individual episode, which mm-hmm. I thought was funny. And then like one of the episodes, they actually kind of like have two beds and then they mm-hmm. magically smack together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was enthralled. I want those ten minutes of my life back, please. Nope, dude. There's a lot of more minutes I want back from my life. Stand in line. And they're all from 15 years of working on one movie. <laughs> now, we, well, we talked about the, the first Adams Family movie just yep. a little bit. We didn't, uh, we sort of just glanced over the, uh, the second one. Adams Pubert. Family Values? Number two. We need to talk about Adams Family Values. Oh, God, that movie's so awesome. Uh, would you I have, enjoyed um, that. Yeah. I found it entertaining. I will not say it's awesome, but I did find it very entertaining. There was the thing about sequels is, and I think this probably made that sh- movie better in my view, is that there isn't so much backstory. You right. already know all the characters. They're not you setting up go, Fester not being Fester. You right. just go right. Right, right into it. it, and like yep. she just has the Joan baby, Cusack. Boom, we're Joan have Cusack the shows right up now. for a reason. Yeah, yep. It, yep. yep. The yep. whole thing is perfect. It's yeah. episodic. Is basically what they did. It, they yeah. basically turned it into a, a movie version of an episode. Trim the fat. Yeah. yeah, and you know, even if you watch that that movie, there's like it feels like you have a couple episodes kind of moved in together at right. the same time. You've got the the backstory of Fester and and Black Widow character. I forget what her name is. Uh, yeah. Joan Cusack. Yeah, Joan Cusack. Yeah, yeah. The, I don't remember uh, the character's had, name. Yeah, no. yeah, that's what I was trying to think. You had the uh, the kids going off kids to going summer off camp. The camp and just and not the horrors any that camp. they themselves Christy, are going through. Christy McNichol and um no not uh, Chris, oh, no, Christine uh, Baranski and. Nickel, Peter McNichol. Pick, Peter, Peter, thank you. I was twisting. Them I was up. like, what, McNichol, what? Uh, yes. I mean, you know, it was just it was the awesome unique, camp counselors. And yes. there was so much stuff in there, and like just the whole play where Wednesday. Oh, yes. the Pocahontas. And how everything everything ends in fire and kids Blood. running and, and you crazy. You have taken our lands and our people. We shall take everything well, the, back were now. Were the parents there at that point? They're all going like, Bravo, bravo. Yeah. What a great production. That's that's just. 
That's yeah. how that's how I want to see my kids do theater. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fire. Who did the theme song for the second one? I know MC Hammer the did the second movie. The, yeah, didn't MC MC Hammer did the first one? He did. Yeah, one. he did. Who did this? Huh. Then who did the second one? Was it still MC Hammer? I don't know if they did a song in the second one, did they? Sure, I don't remember. It's been a I while. I think it was just basically film score. Google it! <laughs> it was just film score. Yeah, I had a uh, Good an old research, boss Brett. <laughs> shut up, Jamie. Ah, yeah. oh, shut up! <laughs> I think I will say this, though. Uh, I appreciate that they turned the uh, new Adams Family into a cartoon format. Not I, to a live action. I liked it a lot better than I thought it would, but at the same time, they were like, I think several years ago, there was like talk about Tim Burton doing a uh, an animated Adam's Family, sort of like the way he did Nightmare Before Christmas. So it's like Ooh. when I found out the CGI one that was... That would be more like a stop motion. Stop motion, yeah, that's okay, right. Okay, yeah. So when I, I found out That'd they were doing the CGI... So when I found out they were doing the CGI one, it was like, oh, that, that's, you know, it's like they do so many movies and see, you know, I can understand why they do yeah. it. It's cheaper. You can just spit I, movies out. Cheaper, faster. You get I less, would less love, crew. I would love to see the company that does that movie Coraline. As yes. Laika. Yeah, Laika. Ooh, yeah. Laika. Yeah. Yes. I would the behind, love the, the them behind the scenes do stuff. the Adams family. Yeah. Now, oh, my God. That would be amazing. See, if they, someone like that did that, that would have been great. I actually liked the, the animated one a lot more than I thought it, I was going to. Some of it was like some of the, uh, the booger Bart gross out humor. I was like, oh, I, I can see. Past I, I kind of felt, yeah. Uh, yeah, for that I kind of felt they didn't have to make Fester so um, rude. Disgusting. So yeah, I mean, like the scene where he's in his the bathroom and Wednesday is shooting arrows randomly, and then one <laughs> goes right through his head, and he's just like, uh. he no, he doesn't do that, but he just kind of just <laughs> looks at himself in the mirror when this arrow goes through his head. All right. That was funny. It was. But when he does something like just flat out toilet humor, it wasn't necessary. But there, was a, there was that great scene where he sticks his head out of them and goes, Hey, Wednesday. Nice shot. Exactly. <laughs> That's so, Also, I want to bring this up that Wayne actually does a pretty good impression of Uncle Fester, but there was a long, long time ago. I used to have kicking Halloween parties, and everyone, the requirement was you had to dress up and it had to be badass, and you had to come by and get drunk. So one was Halloween. Every party? Yeah. One Halloween, Wayne shows up as Uncle Fester because obviously he's got, you know, shaved head. Got I completely the shaved, head. shaved my he's head. He's got the the monk robe kind of thing going on. But I, he... my niece helped me with the makeup to make uh. me look like I was very. Oh yeah, uh, underneath the eyes too. Looking. You did uh -huh. the darkening yep, of the yep. eyes. I found the light bulb. You push your tongue up against. <laughs> oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like you went to like oh, went, went to great. Spencer. So he, I yeah. open up the door and he's just standing there with the thing, bl <laughs> the light blinking <laughs> on his face. Do you still awesome. do you still have that light bulb? No, God, no. That thing. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, that, that was interesting. That was a really solidly made one uh, with glass and everything that does not survive a three footfall. Oh, damn. Okay. So and now we know. Well done, but does not survive a three footfall. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing about the animated uh, Adams family. The the voices of Gomez and Morticia. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Oscar Isaac. Thank you. And yes. uh, Charlize Theron were actually really good in the the roles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see Charlize Theron being a really good Morticia because she has that 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 sexy kind of not not like except like in Monster. Voice. What? <laughs> except, oh, but yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> that does prove her acting chops. I oh, can yeah, tell you that much. I was terrified for, of her for years after that movie. <laughs> um, no, but yes, absolutely. Um, I just I I thought they did an amazing job with with Gomez and and Morticia. Pugsley and Wednesday. I like the I fact it looked the like the Charles Adams artwork to a point. Artwork, yeah, a yes. little bit, yeah. Artwork was great. Uh, still a little Wednesday bright, though. I trying felt that the CG find... was still too bright. The uh, Yes, wait, th thank you. Way it, too the bright. The CG certain... felt like, the, like the, the lighting of the CG sets was just a little too bright. I felt there darker. needed to be a little bit more in the shadows. Of the corners needed to be a little bit more darker. The only character I really have an issue with is Fester because I felt they just turned him way too slapstick, which... Now, Jackie mm. Coogan, Jackie Coogan had the slapstick aspect yep. of it in the TV show, but he wasn't an idiot. Well, that was right. A, that's and what that's it what seems... I felt like Nick Roll, Nick Kroll, Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll's character, he turned him into a friggin' idiot. Oh, it's kind of interesting with the character itself. In the original TV series, uh, Jackie Coogan was uh, Morticia's uncle, whereas right. uh, later on, they actually ended Made up him making... his brother. Exactly. So, you know, it's up to you. If you that's know. an interesting yeah. conversation. Uh, you know, I, I was trying – I knew there was another Adams Family that I was forgetting about because I could see I could see it in my head because I watched it. And it was the series that they did with uh, 
Carl Stroykin still playing Lurch, who played him in the Raul Julia films. Yeah. Tim Curry was Gomez. That's right. Oh, and Daryl right. Hannah was Morticia. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Was that a series or was that a movie? Oh my God. It was the Adams Family Reunion. Which I heard and was terrible. I do remember that. Daryl Hannah but had really they, like bad, fake black hair done. They couldn't, yeah, they couldn't yeah. get all the cast that was in the movies to do it. So oh they, my God. they cast who they could. They still had the same guy playing Things. who's a magician. I, I met him before. He was Thing. But I have to say, Tim Curry actually is Did a Did you shake his good hand? To, <laughs> Tim Curry was a good, uh, I you know, is a good casting as Gomez. I Tim think. Curry they is had some great other, in um, everything. Yeah. They had some Even other awesome. uh, characters. Some other Adams characters were added to the story, yeah. and they had Ray Walston. Oh, I loved Ray Kevin Walston. Kevin McCarthy. My favorite Mar- Martian. Oh, my Herman God, Kevin Zeddy. McCarthy. Estelle Harris. Estelle Harris. Um, Alice Ghostly, who was on um, Bewitched. I think she I played would... Grandmama. I think oh. I remember this. If, Ed Begley Jr. Up. Who? Ed, Ed Begley Jr., Jr., man. Transylvania 65. Doctor, yes, He yes. was Dr. <laughs> Philip Adams. Uh, yeah, tons of Adams characters were added to this. Now I, probably, I need to go watch this again. I, do, I, I don't know dude, if it's available, I, but it's probably one of those things you could probably go on like YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. Let's, Haley Duff was in let's it. Let's check the Haley Google. Duff. Clint Show. Howard. Oh, Clint Howard's in everything. And he's creepy as fuck. <laughs> Uh, but yet again, another actor who's very underestimated because yes, I've absolutely. seen him do some really outstanding acting he in his time. He was hysterical in Arrested Development. He was really good in the movie. If anyone ever gets a chance to watch an early Charlie Sheen flick called The Wraith, I remember. Oh the Wraith. my God, that's I a saw great that in the movie. theater. <laughs> so did I. It was an amazing ass movie. It's a and Wraith, man. What a Wraith? That was also an a car, evil right? Spirit. He, oh, he, yeah. was, he, he, drove, he drove a car. He drove a car. Yeah, he, around he the winding roads. He was like a, the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it had actually a, a, quite a few Camaro, people in it. It had Nick Cassavetes <laughs> uh, as the uh, antagonist in the story. Yeah. It had um, uh, Clint Howard, yep. Who, yep. who actually was the, the nerd. He was the guy who came up with the idea for the brain. Or of the course. Signal jammers and all this stuff. He, you got to see his hair. His hair is amazing. He had some? It, he's got the yeah, white. He's, he's got, got this white poofy. He's got this poofy fro that's almost like a vanilla ice, but like three <laughs> times larger than it should be. And the glasses, these um, these thick, really thick, thick Coke bottle glasses. Coke bottle yep. glasses. Nice. Is this uh, something you can see on Tubi? Yeah, actually. It should be, it should be oh, actually cool. on Wait, uh, which one? Netflix. The, uh, the Adams Family. Oh, no, no. Was, the, Wraith. the Wraith. Oh, The Wraith? Uh, yeah, it's it's free on one of the, the channels. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's it might a, even be on Shudder. I love that movie. I remember it's a great movie. It. I love it. I love the movie. Um, the... The character of uh, not Scud, uh, Gutter Man, uh, Gutter Boy, Boy and Gutter Boy, Skank, Skank, Skank. Gutter oh Boy, and Skank. God. This is there's this great scene. My friend and I would say this to us all the time when we get drunk. Uh, whenever somebody would show up, he goes, "Well, I smell a cop. You smell a cop." Actually, Skank, I smell French fries, but that don't make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> It was an 80s film. Yeah, totally 80s. <laughs> I mean, the, the the comic relief, these two guys were the comic relief, Skank yeah, they and were. the Gutter Boy. Uh-huh. But they did it so well because you just, you got to a point where you kind of rooted for them. You did root for them. Like, yep. as you're seeing them do stupid ass stuff, you come on, guys, just try a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> and like Skank's always like sniffing like glue or something oh, like no, that. Oh, no, he's drinking brake fluid. Oh, he's drinking brake he's fluid. He's drinking brake fluid and a mixture of other uh, things. That's got a kick. kick. That's got a kick. kick to it. Yeah. Do you think we did the right thing? (laughs) On behalf of Kevin, Jamie, Andrew, and Wayne, thank you for listening to The Mental Suppository. Until next week, this is Brett Herholtz saying... I knew I'd disturb you. The Mental Suppository has been produced by Brett Herholtz and Jamie Billings and distributed by M the Media Project. Theme music generously donated by Mr. B, the Gentleman Rhymer. Visit his webpage at gentlemanrhymer.com. We would love to hear from our fans. Email us at mentalsuppository at gmail.com.